Lord. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. We pray you go with us through this meeting. Bless our mayor and our commission, our city manager, all the city employees, Father, just continue to go with us. We go back to your, 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 the business of the city tonight, Father. Just bless it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Roll call.
put our life guards responding to the correct way, do everything out there. We have four life guards on duty that about to get out, so get ready to do CPR. I mean, they're trained in CPR, but we were lucky there's a paramedic there. The office is a paramedic there that they trained in CPR, and they did that. And uh, we checked this morning. I mean, I didn't go to the hospital last night. I stayed there with the office before written up. They went to the hospital last night. We made contact with them later to say, let's get to the fight. And that's, that's really the thing. And we had a group of kids here from St. Joe's University, the Stennis Presbyterian Church. And this is the Housing Development Alliance. And I talked to John Rudd. And I said, do you have any downtime? Which you go to the league and helps paint. And they came up there in a day. They only got the one bathroom painted, the men's bathroom, but it was perfect. And, um, and then we fell down at Francis' Diamond, and there were two of them. And these kids gave up the spring break to come here to work, and they paid to come here and work and sleep on the floor in the church. So that's what they did. And then the other thing, Derek and I went to a meeting the other day, and then he had a meeting in Jackson, and I went back to LKLP. And we talked about this when I was running for office, about public transportation, which is a huge need. And we worked out, I was like 18 or 20 different stops on public transportation. What we're going to try to do is start it this summer as a pilot program. They're going to provide uh, handicapped style buses so anybody can ride for a minimal fee. And, and we're going to keep a log to see how many people do it. It's going to run from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. And I think that's really good news also. And for the people that can't afford it, I talked to some people who will have some kind of a campaign, buy a ticket for your neighbor. You know, like I say, it's $25 a month, you buy a ticket, you buy some, somebody else. And uh, then if it works, they're going to have to ride a grant for a trolley that's handicapped accessible. And then we can maybe the guys come next week in with the So uh, you know, a lot of times we've had, had these meetings and everybody talks, we talk about the water, we talk about this, we talk about that. But we never say what good news we have. So we're going to start that with everything. If you've got something out there you want to share, all you do is stand up, say it, whatever. But this is going to be the first segment of everything. I mean, because everything's not negative. You know, it's a new day and we're going to change. Anybody else got anything up here? Can I let them know about the second grade? Please do. Uh, so um, the University of Kentucky has a program called CEDIC, and um, it was a, they have an initiative that were funded through some grant money, and they have an initiative that's going to, um, well, it has already, it's a very active and already thriving, um, but they have some grant money that they're going to be giving away. And I won't say the word giving away, you have to apply for it, but every community is pretty much guaranteed a portion of grant funds. And you can get up to uh, $50,000. There's uh, three rolling app dates, um, April the 1st, May the 1st, and July the 1st. Um, they want one proposal uh, on behalf of the entire city. Um, and there's already some work going on on another proposal for some downtown stuff. There's a busy conversation that maybe that, that proposal might complement or support that existing work. Um, Bailey is aware and um, other people in the community are aware and I know that Envision is very supportive, Foundation of Appalachian uh, Kentucky is very supportive, so we're going to work on um, making sure, well there will definitely be an application in, but the, the money is pretty much guaranteed. I was talking to this, I told her what she's talking about, we're trying to get a grant from USDA for $100,000 to go to farmer's market at the end of town. If we got this $50,000, one of the biggest needs that come to town, I mean, if we could put restrooms in it, it would be great. And if we got enough money, we could do that. But also, Derek had the corners had the idea that we could go behind the pavilion, not the pavilion, but the farmer's market, and build that big deck out over the river where you'd have places to eat and stuff. That would be your first win downtown. And that's what we said we were going to try to do one, one stop at one thing at a time. And that would be ideal because it'd be new construction right there in the triangle and work their way back. Thank you. I don't have to stay for the rest of the week. Y'all been here all day and be here all day.
it was months, but I mean, pretty close. It was a foot in the floor so as we speak. And it all and the doors were ordered. Once we get that in. And the dial was supposed to come in today, this afternoon. The dial. Yeah, I talked to Chase while well, no. yeah. I swear we got an inside track for another. <laughs> you got no answer down there. <laughs> Anything else? Item number three on the agenda. Do we have anyone to talk about? What it is, um, it's her name. I know what Tracy uh, Lord, not uh, Tracy Alexander Lord. Um, she works with the business program and she was going to just have a proclamation in about April the second they're going to come down to the office and they'll sign it just to recognize how much work this group. Stuff. And we don't have a problem with this group on the agenda. And I thought they might come to the meeting, but I think we've got a fire across. It's probably my fault. That's what it is. Fire number four on the agenda. Yes, this is our second reading of Chapter 35, <clears throat> the Personal Policies and Procedures. We just amended the ordinance to be in line with the personnel policy manual that the city is using uh, today. Any questions, Lori, over the ordinance? Again, we did the, uh, the first reading there at the last commission meeting. Need a motion. I'll make a motion. We need a second. Motion. Second. 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 Second.
tries to leave it, we're not saying that we're going to fix every waterfront because we raise the brakes. We're still going to have brakes, just like we had out by the hospital, those they big brakes. But the other part about this right here, we do have an interconnect that's been approved. We have a meeting next month. Me and Derek, we go to Scott and um, Ron Johnson, Brandon and Chris. So that right there is going to take away the world off some of it. What we want to do, I mean, we, we signed a contract to be the provider of water for the county. Our rates are the lowest around. I mean, and if you look at that ordinance, I don't know when the last time it was updated, 1950. I mean, so there's some, it was a long, long time ago. But 1956. 1956. I mean, we have to have money. You know, we want to fix the water. But it's not going to get fixed unless you buy the pipe and you have the men and you have the stuff. And then the other thing that we didn't mention is there's certain grants we can't get because our water rates are too low. And don't panic if the thing is paid for today. Once you read it, once you explain what they're talking about, but we're not in that category on the water. About PSC, PSC, they can't hear you. PSC investigates on the water laws and bankers either nine or eleven districts in eastern Kentucky. We're not in there. And now Leslie, Leslie County Water District is. And so is Martin County, but we don't want I mean because we're still a city water system. I mean, but we have to fix our water is the biggest problem we have in town. We get that fixed, then we can start on these other things. And this is the first step in doing that. You had a question. Well, a question kind of comment. I mean, you addressed it, is that that part of this increase is going to allow you to establish a maintenance fund uh, yes. where that you can pull from. And I think that yes. if that message is well communicated, well, I think it will make um, the bitter pill be swallowed a little easier well, to understand thing, there's money that's going to be there for that rainy see day. In product, we're going to change the entire way we're doing water elections, cutoffs, everything. And everybody's going to be on the same table at the same time. This is what we're doing. And, and you know, we're not sitting here saying it was wrong 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Something's not really working. Like we're going to try to fix it. Yeah. 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 Sewer charge in it. I'm sorry. Sewer charge also There's always that there's a sewer charge in it. But it's a lot less than the water charge. Yeah, it's too many. But this will give us a chance. Is not it is currently, but it's not necessarily tied to it going forward. Is that yeah. correct? Sewer so right. is independently rated. Yeah, we. So we would maintain at what are we right now? Nine sixty-two based on, on charge. Oh. Yeah. It's based on consumption. Yeah. The sewer is rated. Water, water consumption, not the water consumption. But if we it's based don't, on water consumption, we don't do the sewers out of here. We just do the water. But if we don't do this, we can't expand or fix all the problems we have on this plan. Um, and this is the first reading, so people have things to do the next you. meeting before we pass it. Because when we read it the next meeting, we're going to pass it. I mean, if they've got a problem with it, they're going to pass it. It's 7 o'clock, they're more than welcome to go. But, but we're going to try to fix the water problem in the summer and not in the winter. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And we're just falling in line behind all the other cities who have aging systems in place, and that's what we're and trying to do. Even with our sort of small raise on it, we're, we're still, still going to be on the bottom end of the spectrum. Yeah. We, with these raise in the rates, what we've been faced with was this started out as the city of Adler Water System. Now we run water all the way to the head of the So how many miles we got? We have 26 miles in one direction and 28 miles in the other direction. Just straight road miles. That doesn't count all the tributaries that we run off in for all the communities outside of that. Or elevation. The elevation changes. I mean, you go to Fort Leatherwood, you're reaching 12 to 1,400 feet in some of the areas up through there. But with this increase here, we hope to bring more personnel in. The city has very roughly changed any at all the number of people that were made just to handle the city water. And now we're all the way to both ends of the county. We've not added those additional people. Wiley scratches his head every morning and pulls his heart out, trying to figure out where he's going to send everybody to. 
taking care of these problems that we got. But we're hoping to utilize this, and we made a needs list out, and personnel was one of the things on our needs list to try to get those additional folks out there. We're pushing more for prevention with those additional folks as well. And that's one of the things that we've never had the, the opportunity to get guys out there working our pump station, working our valves, <coughs> things like that to help prevent these problems. I mean, you're looking, some of the valves can be as high as $25,000, $30,000. And these are valves that need to be worked on a constant basis. But can I pull a guy off of a water leak to put him onto a, a valve work? It's really hard. We've got to work things like that. And as Melissa had mentioned, Max also mentioned, we are at the limit on most of these grant opportunities. To secure these grant opportunities, you have to show how you're going to repay or make your 20% match on these opportunities. We can't pull that money out of the air. We've got to have the income coming in from these additional costs to be able to secure those additional grants from RD and then all the agencies like that. But we spoke that several times. I think water is our biggest problem. And for us to make sure the city continues to move forward, we've got to have a firm grasp on that and get it started to be taken care of. It did not happen overnight. It will not be fixed overnight. It's going to be a long-term process. But this is our first step moving forward. This year we were fortunate to be able to allow it, but we only have one pocket in Perry County without water for a couple of years, three days that we work school system, they didn't have to call off school, they had affordable, I mean, so, I mean, it's on the forefront, but I don't want to sit here for four years and worry about the water every went. I mean, we're going to always worry about it. I mean, but if we can fix it now, I mean, we can do a lot more stuff. I mean, and I think we've got to get through to try to do this. We're trying to be as equitable as, as possible because right now, I guess 75% of our customers are outside of our corporate limits. But just for comparison sake, the city of Pikeville just went through this similar uh, somewhat and they raised their in-city rate by a dollar and their out-of-city rate by nine. And so that imbalance is something we're not trying to necessarily strike. Now granted, we were saying that we may very much go out of city nine as well, but uh, just that imbalance between in-city and out-of-city, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, trying to avoid, and even as uh, Derek told me earlier today, is that you know, when we send stuff to the far ends of, of, of our lines, it has to be sent with more chemicals because you lose so much in treatment uh, through the transport uh, of this water to, to its end point, and it, it is kind of remarkable. And, and even with the, to, to reference what everybody's saying, you know, the bare minimum bill in Knott County is 1825, so we're still going to be below that. Um, the bare minimum one in the Hyde Leslie, I think, is twenty dollars and twenty-four cents, and so at least on the end city, we're, we're below there. Leslie also kind of breaks the idea of a commercial customer that their middle, their minimum is over thirty, which is obviously above uh, any, any minimum rate we have. And we don't have a, we don't, we don't designate anything uh, specific for commercial. But, uh, but to Melissa's point, and I'll hush up. Uh, it's on us as a commission, as a city, to properly relay. The, what we're doing, and it, so it's not just a rate increase because hey, we want more money. You know, the, uh, the list that has been worked on about uh, city personnel uh, and whatever our simulations show from billing what, what the new revenue is expected to be. Um, yeah, because people will accept it within reason if there is true reason. You have, you have to consider, I mean, I think it's 53% of those using the city water are just using the minimum amounts. We're still looking. It's not a, a huge increase for those folks. But my percentage is enormous, right? I mean, you say 70% increase. <laughs> yeah, that's an enormous deal. So I didn't go. Yeah, try to keep it within the But you know, the biggest, the biggest thing is, as a city, as a business, I, know I am terrified to not have a reliable water. And I don't want to poison my customers or bad things happen. I'm very excited that we'd be able to, to reach this level. And we have better equipment than most cities. We just need the money to work it, get the manpower, and we're in good shape, better shape than I thought this will work. I mean, that was one of the things I've spoken with several of the commissioners here over the past few days. I mean, I hope to have those additional people. I hope to have a valid exercise in the machine. Um, we need to start a process where we do inspections on our time. We've never had that before. None of this stuff is cheap. Or, 
meters. We have to blow up so many meters just to make sure that we are within the standard that we need to be. Well, this will give us an opportunity to replace fire hydrants, maybe things that we have been making for years. We ought to be next week for the man who's going to try to fire that right there. Yes, sir. Right. But it, it's a constant thing. I mean, and the, the thing we've been faced with, the chemicals we treat, the water has increased, the electricity that we use at every one of our pump stations, sending the water out has increased. I mean, if you saw the monthly power bill for the uh, water plant, you would go. It's a tad bit more than your local residential power bill. But we, I, I think it's also fair to say that none of us takes this lightly, uh, especially for people on fixed incomes, limited incomes. Uh, we understand that this will have an impact, hopefully minimal, uh, but it's as much about not just the present, but the future of the city. Any other questions? I think. Thank you all. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, originally, we had, I thought we had discussed the uh, progressive charge, and then I noticed it goes down once you get over 10000 Is there a reason that we did that? Or am I just misremembering what happened last Friday? Well, the reason that we did that is, is the more you use, I guess, give them a, if they use more, if we encourage that, um, we give them a break on, on that price. And we've done that in the past. Um, Does it make sense to encourage more water use? Sure. Well, one, one action of thought is in more that the more someone uses, the more demand they're causing on our plant. So that's something we can discuss <laughs> in this month because I've heard the... We will, before we finalize this, we'll have another special talk meeting to go over that with the company and everything because we just had to have the first reading so everybody's aware that there's a possibility that the rates will change. And my second question has to do with uh, perhaps another special call meeting. Uh, it's my understanding that significant changes to an ordinance require that we go back and do a first reading. Would a change in price constitute a significant change? Um, I, I don't think, well, I mean, I guess it depends on, on how we change it. Um, I, I don't think that if we, I mean, if we change this a couple of dollars, I don't think it requires to read it again. If we change it more than that, then I think it would. Um, that's my understanding of, and I'll get that checked out and make sure that we're going to work. Right, so we can change it and likely need to the benefit from this initial We know that we're going to look at that. Well, it just might be worth remembering as we have these discussions that, that may constitute having to go back and do a first reading again. Yeah. Well, if it's not going to go any higher, then I'm not sure that it would be a significant change. The only thing that we did to say is y'all had a little bit of outside of the city. We said seven to the city. on the agenda is the bid opening for the refuse trailer. We have conducted, or we advertised for, for two weeks <coughs> to purchase a new utility trailer for the maintenance department. We only ended up with one bid coming from Martin Speedville over in London for that trailer. The uh, bid is $28,000. The trailer been inspected. It's in great shape. Uh, I'll make a recommendation to accept the bid from Martin Speedville. That's Mayor Bryce. I mean, you know it's what? actually pretty cheap compared to the other that we were looking at, and they did a substantial amount of work to try to. It looks very good. And that way, when the refuse truck does go around, all they have to do is take it to the garage, put it in that trailer, and take it to the landfill. Well, I'll make a motion. Have a motion. Mr. Rutherford, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Rutherford, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Rutherford, do I have a second? 
Next item on the agenda, number seven, Rumpke Southwest Addendum. Uh, have Lori present this. At last commissioner's meeting, we looked at this exact contract, but with a significant change. I reported the incorrect monthly payment amount. It is actually 10 times greater than I reported. And in my own defense, I don't do math. That's why I went to law school. So I had our CFO look over the numbers, and this is a correct amount based upon us changing the um, amount of, with, of residents that we charge the current rate of $16.50 to per month. What this, uh, to remind the commission, what this does is change the way that we are paying Rumpke. Across the board for the original contract, uh, Rumpke gets paid 80% of what's collected. The city is paid 20%. Residential only, the city collects, and whatever we get paid, we give them 80%. So whatever comes in, they get 80%. The change in this addendum is they get paid a flat rate every month regardless of what we collect. What happened uh, when we began the contract, we had a residential units of 1,400, I believe 67. As time went on, Rumpke reported to us that they are actually collecting from 1,797 approximately residences. So that was a great increase from what we reported to them. What they want, they were holding, saying that we owed them money um, almost 100000 in arrears based upon the items that they collected per residential unit. We revisited the contract. I pointed out to them that they contracted for that $1,467. Um, they disagree with that, but that's the city's stance. So they did, we, didn't we have not paid it. This is the resolution to their complaints that they're picking up more than what we said was there. Um, what we had agreed to was, uh, or had suggested, there's no agreement, the agreement's here, either the commission approves it or not, was one, instead of, they wanted 1,797 residential units, uh, we said it, we have, based on our water meters, 1,525, give or take some, and at the current rate of 16, I mean, six, one, 1656, I said I'm not good at math, and there's a total yearly uh, to pay to Rumpke per this agreement, $242,437.40. That would be 12 equal monthly payments of $20,203.20. I talked to our CFO. Um, monthly, right now as it is, we usually pay them in right around $19,000 to $20,000. So this is kind of the range that they're receiving now. Um, it is about $1,000 greater, more or less maybe um, a couple hundred dollars greater depending on the month, but we're in this range. It's up to the commission to decide if they want to do this addendum. Um, we don't have to, we have a valid contract, but I can't guarantee that Rumpke is going to say, hey, we're going to keep collecting the 1,797. We might just start collecting the 1,467 <coughs> residents. So what happens to the other almost 300, or greater than 300 residents that they're collecting at? Um, Rumpke has been very willing to work with us. In signing this agreement, they forgive the almost $100,000 in arrears or saying that we owe them. Whether we owe them or not, that's a question that we disagree we owe them, but they are, that is part of this agreement, that they forgive that amount. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Um, 
essentially it's just what we already paid. It's just saying here's your plan to be yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's exactly it. it. The, the big difference to me is I'm sitting on behalf of the city is we pay them this amount no matter, no matter what we yeah. collect. Yeah. So say there's a mass exodus and we only collect a lower amount, that, that doesn't affect Rumpke's money. It cuts on our way instead of cutting both ways. Um, but we can change what we report to them if we did have a mass exodus. Right. Correct. We change that. Um, we have number two, we have agreed or, or discussed a modification of residence. Basically, if there's a decrease of more than 10 residents or an increase of more than 10 residents, we um, request that change within this agreement. We don't have to go through another agreement. We just have to report to them. And then um, they, within 60 days, Rumpke and uh, the city will you know, make that change. So that we would have to hold on. We would have to keep making that payment for two months, though. So that would be our lifetime. We wrote to have about 18 months left on this contract. Yeah, right? Correct. And then we had to renegotiate the impact. What Rumpke wanted to do to begin with was part of this contract is for us to do another five year renewal on top of our five years that was running now. That's not allowed, and we aren't interested in doing that. Well, what, yeah. It was even to that point. What, when do you have to kind of, is there an automatic renewal period? There it is, has to be renegotiated. It has to be renegotiated. There is a renewal period stated within that contract of five years. Mm -hmm. So if we negotiate a new contract, it'll be for an additional five year term. But as the, the city, we can't. That's not like um, 180 days prior to the end of the contract. Well, hey, well, you're in there for another five years. Right? So the way, exactly, that's, that's, not, that that's not, not, not what's not going what on. The way it is, is if we don't settle something, by the end of the contract, it just, just we're done, yeah. and we're out looking for another franchise, yeah. gotcha. or doing the garbage ourselves. So. This right now will work. I think we should make a motion. Yeah. Well, this will prevent this. any litigation, yes. any debate over the household amounts, regardless of any trash that's set out that you know we're going to pick up. The math. We're collecting this month. We don't Correct. Yeah, we're actually doing twenty-five to twenty-six. Yeah. 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 So I make a motion we accept we okay. do this. I'll I'll second. Second. I'll second. I'll second. Oh, yeah. Motion is second. Roll call. Commission two. Four. Commission two. Four. Commission two. Four. Commission three. Four. Ma'am, I'll move. Four. Thank you. Item number eight on the agenda tonight. Uh, we spoke several times about this in the past. Just touched on it a little bit. Uh, We'd like to rename just the auditorium and cover the forum in honor of memory of Mayor Bill Warren. I have a motion to make the vote. It's a pleasure. I think it's a great idea. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion to accept the vote. Commissioner Stu. Commissioner Blake. Hazard High School Theater will be proud to introduce our next play on April 26th. Seven. <laughs> At the Bill Gorman Auditorium. Four. Oh. <laughs> I just have four. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> four. 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 If you'd like to do a ceremony at the play, if we do it at the play, and then what well, I was thinking, well, we've got a lot of this memorabilia here in this room. We can take certain artifacts and pieces of it and put it in the lobby of the thing. Right inside, you have the dedication to the Congress of God. The left hand side is completely open. We're going to uh, item number nine on the agenda was five a minute ago. We're going to move to item number ten, utility bills. Water, we deal with uh, 327, 524.99. We play 
at 300 594 8 on the sewer. Bill 128 476 29. Budget 121 133 On gas, we bill 355 626 94. Budget 269 327 89. And garbage, bill 26 082. Budget 25. 589.85. So when people, you know, like sometimes they don't pay their full bill, how do you know what, which part goes to which? You know, like in the winter, they just don't pay it all on the gas and then they catch it up the next month? No, it goes all over. And how do you figure out to get this? So it is just prorated yeah. per each respective. For each thing. Gotcha, based on. Well, because that was my question as well. It is, you know, obviously gas spikes in cooler months, and then it seems like throughout the year gas is almost collects more than it builds. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas well, everything else kind of, you know, lags behind. You have some people that make the whole system lag behind. Yeah, see, they get you up on the warm up. That's why. Yes. You will say it gets the web so. Well, I don't know, I'm just saying that the well, building... You have a base rate. I mean, yeah. you still collect the yeah, base rate. But that's even... You're even hoping to change that. You're yeah. hoping to have a substantial gap in some way. Oh, no. But even, even to the point, that just before we move on uh, to what the mayor had mentioned earlier, uh, in addition, the, the splashy thing will be the rate increase, and, and rightfully so. But, you know, there's a legitimate undertaking uh, amongst city personnel and then the support support commissioners to try to do our best to overhaul the entirety of how we do uh, water and then extend that beyond it. And at least, you know, chief amongst and beyond radius collections, as Carlos just, you know, outlined, we tend, to, on using the lag, the, the month after, uh, the prior bill, we, we tend to collect about 90% uh, on average, I think, on, on water. And, you know, most businesses can't get by with the 10% <laughs> delinquency. Um, and so, system. Yes. 
just a side thing. Yeah. No, no. Well,
73 drug and alcohol related charges, 14 total involuntary hospitalizations, and 9 DUI related arrests. Yeah. How many were alcohol related? Probably none of them. Yeah. Uh, the criminal case activity works a total of 27 criminal cases, uh, 21 for felony, 6 for misdemeanor. A total of $14,423.59 stolen and recovered $5,760.59. Our accident activity, I said earlier, 42 accidents, 6 were injury producing, 36 were non injury, 0 fatal accidents, 2 DUI related accidents, and 14 citations were issued during those accidents. As you can see on the back, I uh, think we started last month on the different types of drugs that we'd seized during the month. Nine bags of methamphetamine, zero opiates, four bags of marijuana, and one roach, uh, the rotten six, a box of 13, the van is 118, 28 of which were, uh, or 28 additional ones, the Mexican Xanax is value zero, uh, and none on that, five different ones. Also during the month, February, the Hazard Police Department got the highlight the following. Uh, again, saturation control for high intensity drug trafficking areas throughout the city. This concentrated uh, effort directs officers to direct contact uh, for known drug locations. When we're doing that, it was uh, one Friday a month. We had uh, different locations that we received numbers, complaints on, and we sort of saturate that area, do a knock and talk on the door, basically check on the what's going on. Uh, officers attend A ride training, advanced roadside department. Driving enforcement gives us the ability to distinguish not only if the person is sober, but gives us the ability to determine what type of drug they're taking. So just further an education uh, for our officers uh, on the field sobriety tests and that kind of stuff. Uh, that concludes my <coughs> presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be in I was going to talk to you about the uh, for the
and the rain said, we got to go right today. I mean, we, we got to be for Hazard, with Hazard, all the way. And I think that, because I really do see, and I'm not, I mean, I talk about the commissioners, but I think people realize that we have a different energy. Right? I mean, we really want to try. It may not work, you know, because there's always negatives and stuff, but it won't be because we don't try. And that's really, you know, that's really all you can do. But you got to have good people to route the grants and get the stuff done, the police department, the fire department, the water department, the gas. Everybody's got to work together. And tomorrow, all of those people come into the meeting, all of the heads of all the departments come in to speak to them. So, I mean, I think by the time they do finish their week, we'll 300 people. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I think the main thing about the strategic plan more than anything is getting people talking about the city again. Let's, okay, yeah, we're a tired city. Yeah, we know we've lost interest. But let's talk about it. We're, if we want to stay here, if we want to live here, let's make it back. Sorry. Oh, geez, sorry. That's good. <laughs> you apologize for such a thing. Well, no, I mean, it's almost everyone wants to go home and get something wrong with you. Yeah, you did full. I'm sorry. Thank you. 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 Let's pray. Your gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us tonight. Continue to go with us and bless all the city employees, all our city fathers. Father, just be with them. Just lead God and direct our paths. Father, for it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.